what the player probably benefited the most from uh, some calls from the officials is Brandon Cooks. And Cooks had probably his, considering the circumstances, the best game of his Patriots career. And on the other side, Stephon Gilmore had an awesome playoff game. And those are two big off-season acquisitions who early on the points of the season got a lot of criticism. But on the biggest game of the year, the Brandon, uh, Stephon Gilmore gave up like one or two catches and had a lot of huge pass breakups in this game. And Brandon Cooks had, I believe, six catches for 100 yards and two huge pass interference calls that might have given like another 50 or so yards there. What were your yeah, thoughts was, on them breaking out? Yeah, well, it was, it was 68 yards on, on those two pass interference calls. And uh, we'll, we'll start with Cooks, and I'll go to Gilmore. Cooks, uh, I mean, he his thing all year has been that he hasn't been able to handle physical cornerbacks, and he's a one-trick pony. He goes and gets only go routes. And the first pass he caught was a go route, but then he had a whole bunch of effective uh, plays on comeback routes. He had a couple of slants, I think. He ended up with those six catches, and uh, um, his catch rate all year was 57%, which was 11th on the Patriots, so not great. He ends up coming up with six catches on eight targets. One was a drop. He probably should have had that one. But overall, terrific game. The Jaguars, um, they don't like to switch what they're doing on defense. They stick with their cover three. They stick with the guys that they're, they're covering. So A.J. Boye was on Brandon Cooks all, all game, and uh, that was going to be the matchup. Brandon Cooks was torturing A.J. Boye. He ended up getting the, the uh, 100 yards, and so they had to switch Jalen Ramsey on him in the fourth quarter because they were uh, they were like, oh, no, the Patriots are coming back and they're going to keep on using Brandon Cooks. So they switched Ramsey on him, and then Ramsey gives up the 36-yard pass interference penalty. There was no real question on that one. So um, the Jaguars had no answers for Cooks, and that's kind of a little bit surprising considering um, what Cooks has done all year. I mean, he's faced criticism for not being able to beat good cornerbacks. I mean, Xavier and Howard kind of uh, ate him alive when he played against the Dolphins. Only had one catch on, on seven targets, but – uh, Cooks was, was excellent. And, you know, uh, the same thing goes for Stephon Gilmore. I mean, we, we criticized him a bunch early on in the season. Uh, it was the first four games. He was miserable. You look at that um, Fozzie Whitaker screen pass, and, the, I mean, he's running to the complete opposite side of the field. That was Stephon Gilmore right there. That was him not being – not understanding the defense. But uh, Eric Rowe uh, said yesterday that, I mean, he saw a change in, in Gilmore after that Panthers game. He really started to get a little more. He started to gel with the defensive backs, understood his role a little bit better. And then uh, as the season went on, I mean, he was, he was great from then on. Uh, he, he had a great game against Mike Evans in week five. And from then on, I mean, he's been one of the best Patriots defensive players there was. Last night, he had a bunch of key plays. He had that incredible bat down on 4th and 14, that would have been a, a great catch for D.D. Westbrook. It's a great throw by um, uh, Blake Bortles right there. I mean, uh, a corner route, he got by the safety. Gilmore is the only man left that, that can make that play. He ends up floating in the air. I saw some people comparing him to Michael Jordan because he just floated in the air so long, and he batted that down. That's the kind of play he can make, and that, that's uh, something that the Patriots were hoping out of him when they signed him. So the Patriots, they didn't go undefeated this season because they got Gilmore and Cooks, but – now it's the playoffs. Everyone's talking about, oh, how much experience the Patriots have in the playoffs and how they, they know what they're doing in these situations. Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks had not played in a playoff game before this year. And then they come out on the AFC Championship game, and both of them have two of their best games of the year. I mean, you, you can't ask for much more than that. So a uh, great performance for Cooks, great performance for Gilmore. I wrote about that um, that went up this morning. So um, it, it ended up being a fun story for the two of them. Yeah, it's funny to think just heading into this game, if I had told you uh, in week five this season, oh, Stephon Gilmore is the shutdown corner and everyone's going to be kind of iffy on Malcolm Butler, you'd go like, what the heck happened? And if you, I told you before this game that, oh, uh, Rob Gronkowski really didn't have an impact. Instead, it was Brandon Cooks torching the Jaguars on the perimeter on vert like vertical routes and comebacks against the top corners – that's exactly the opposite of what we thought was going to happen in this game. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I'll admit, I said all week in the, uh, we were just chatting around, like, uh, what's going to happen in this game. Uh, I was very clear that Brandon Cooks was going to have a bad game. He was not going to be a factor. I didn't think he'd even be targeted much because, I mean, in, in a world where you can just leave him on those cornerbacks and kind of, have, um, keep them occupied and use the rest of your receivers and your running backs as receivers. That seemed like the most logical game plan for the Patriots. But uh, in the end, Cooks ended up being probably, I mean, 
obviously Danny Amendola is the most clutch player in the game for the Patriots offense. But, I mean, Dan, um, Brandon Cooks had the most all-purpose yards. He had the most receiving yards. He ended up getting them uh, downfield twice on pass interference penalties. The second one could have had the score if they didn't stall out in midfield. But, I mean, still, those, like, those are 36 important yards on that pass interference play. So, um, between the pass interferences, he ended up compiling 168 net yards. I mean, that's a great game for Cooks. Gilmore ends up coming up with those two big plat pass deflections, and he only got targeted, I think, twice, two or three times, and there were short plays. Uh, there was one play at the end, he, they got some decent yardage on him, but that was when the Jaguars were just trying to come back. You, you see that happen sometimes. So, uh, again, great performance for Cooks, great performance for, from Gilmore, and uh, now they're, they're, they're a part of this now, you know, like, they, they've become Patriots uh, playoff heroes, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you hear about it with Edelman and Amendola and Butler and everything. And now, I mean, Gilmore and Cooks, they, they are they are a part of the, the Patriots dynasty here. So uh, it, it was good to see. Yeah, and as you mentioned, uh, Cooks had that one drop. And I think that's what kind of set – if Cook he had a, on a deep ball, and I think he ends up scoring because the ball just goes right off his hands. And that probably separated him from having, like, a really great game and just kind of a coming out uh, as a, like, oh, this guy's for real. If he makes that catch and scores a touchdown, I think that's one of, like, all-time Patriots playoff performances.